Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Love Battle High School. Love Battle High School is for two to four players by Japan Anime Games, and it takes about mm, 45 minutes to an hour to play. In the game Love Battle High School, you're gonna be playing as the protagonist, and then of course the uh, antagonist, which are the girls, making this kind of harem anime style thing go on on the board. Now you have a board, you have characters that are all on standees, and you're trying to create these like love triangles between two of the female characters and this male character. You can choose to take the male character and move him around the board, or the females, or both moving them around, gathering cards, which you can then play for the female characters to do certain things or to move. The guy character is able to use certain actions and move around the board as well, going in different locations like the boys' or girls' locker room, the office, or perhaps even the little closet where you can kind of entangle yourselves. The girls have their own heart values, and you're trying to increase them based on the girls that you've acquired during the beginning of the game. Everybody's going to have their own secret objective as to what they're trying to do in the game as far as who they want to mingle with who, and also gaining victory points by making certain interactions happen throughout throughout the game. If you can gain the most victory points at the end of the game before anybody, or more than anybody else, then you're going to win the game Love Battle High School. All right, let's go ahead and take a look down below and I'll show you everything that comes in the game. And then I'll tell you how to play a turn and uh, how it works, a little run through of it. So here we have Love Battle High School and everything included in the game. So let's go ahead and go through a rundown. The first thing is, of course, the box and the rule book. The rule book looks like a little handbook that you get at school, which is pretty cool. One of those little school notebooks. You're going to get a character for each of the different gals, as well as their deck of cards that you shuffle up and put, place in front of uh, these little areas here. You're also going to start every girl at three hearts, and there's little hearts for each girl. What they do, the special abilities, and the type of characters they are, along with uh, your plot points, which are basically going to be your objectives throughout the game and getting key is going to be what is needed to win the game at the end this is vic basically victory points conditions that occur to your player whether it be an awkward boner or a giant lump on your head over here is your class schedule which is basically the rounds of the game you play through seven rounds and then finally you score at the end each of the girls have a starting location based on what it says up here each of the girls are then placed in the rooms so like the history class occult studies cafeteria art and science the male starts in the entry hall there's also a hallway and then, of course, there's additional little rooms you can go into. There's a little bag that is included, and that's because at the beginning of the game, you're going to be taking uh, based on your numbered player. So if it's the two player, take the first player takes these, and the second player takes these. Each of these basically has a girl on the back, and you're going to choose uh, a girl or two girls if you're playing a two player game to uh, basically pair up with the main character, whether it's a love triangle or simply a pairing. That will depend on the number of players and whether you want to or not do that. You then put them in your bag here, so at the end of the game you'll see how well they did. And if the girl uh, girls both have the highest and second highest love, then they are going to be the ones that pair with the character, and you're going to score points based on how well you do there. There's meddling cards at the beginning of every round except for the first. These cards get flipped over and stuff happens. Uh, usually good stuff, but sometimes bad stuff as well along with just different uh, anime tropes, I guess you would say. There is a die that comes included with the game that you'll be utilizing for certain spaces on the board, and there's two phases in which you're going to have things move and things happen, whether it be girls moving based on discarding cards or playing cards because the girl's in the room with the guy, or simply having the guy move two spaces and interact in a room space or drawing a girl card. These are all the girl cards here. And that's the basic uh, l setup of the game and what you're going to get included in the game. Let's come up and I'll explain how a round works, and then I'll show you a round, and then I'll I'll explain the game and tell you what I think about it. So starting the game is very easy. Like I said, you place all the girls in their starting locations, have their decks out, their hearts, and then you're going to give every single player five key or victory points that can actually be used in the game to be spent for certain things, along with just holding onto them to gain points at the end of the game. Give everybody their player tokens, which are going to have all the different types of girls on there, along with one girl card of each different color. There are five girl colors. You've got purple, pink, blue, green, and yellow. And also give them a player phase, which shows you the girls move movements and the hero's movement phase. Set aside all the rest of the key, anything that you're not going to be playing with, put the round token to one, add the conditions of the deck, and begin by having every single player select one or two of the gals to make a love triangle or a connection with the main character based on the number of players in the game. So for instance, maybe I want Sakio and I want uh, Katsumi to be in my love triangle. I'll take these, I'll put them in this little pink bag here, everyone else will do the same thing, and then we'll get rid of the rest of the tokens, hiding them so nobody knows what your love matches truly are. You might have the same as another player you might not it just depends on what you want to choose based on i guess the uh 
the type of trope you want to have for the st style of harem. Uh, you're also going to have all these cards in hand. They could, they could be jealousy cards, flirting, punishment, so on and so forth. And based on the cards, what's going to happen? Sometimes they'll give minus love to characters, sometimes they'll give plus love, sometimes they'll give plus love to multiple characters or minus love to multiple characters. And then other ones are like action cards that can take place uh, to do certain things for the hero, as well as giving them conditions. Make sure you have your little token here or your little card here, which explains the phases of the game, and then you've got your key. The first player is going to start by choosing either the male or the hero phase or the uh, girl phase. Uh, the hero phase is pretty easy. You're going to move him twice, and then you're going to take one action. The action could be to draw a singular girl card of your choice. You can kick a girl out of the room that you're currently in, or you can take a room action. And the room actions are all listed on the board, which I'll kind of explain when we go down below. After that, then you're going to take the girl phase, which is you draw one card from one girl, same thing you're doing in the hero phase, and move girls or play cards until you're done. Moving girls requires you to play one of their cards, and that simply allows you to move them from space to space, ignoring the hallway. So they kind of get to move two spaces, sort of, but the idea is just playing cards to move the girls, or simply playing those cards, as long as the girl is in the room with a hero, to do certain things, whether it be to gain love, or lose love, or interact with the hero in some unique way. After that is done, you've just chosen to end, everyone else will get the same thing to do, and then you're going to move on to the next period, and it's going to rinse and repeat. Now, there's one additional little thing that happens, and it's these meddling cards here, you'll draw one of them and read it, like, Van like younger sister, I need a hug, Oni-chan, uh, minus one love to all girls in the room with the hero, so the little sister comes into the room where all the girls are there and they see uh, the little sister and they get all jealous and they all lose a little bit of love so that that's something that usually happens in anime so all these meddling cards are basically events that occur in anime tropes for these harem style animes uh, so let's go down below and I'll show you basically a round or two of how it's kind of played explain how the uh, plot points work and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game back to the game now as you can see I went hand set up for two players each player has one of each of the different girl cards they've got their five key or victory points that they can utilize throughout the game. They have their reference card, and all the characters are placed in the spaces they were supposed to be in. I also went ahead and set two uh, love interests for each of the characters, so basically there's going to be a triad here in at least one or two different ways. And the rest of the little tokens for the other players are set aside. Even the key that will be used in a pool will be set aside as well. Uh, now, uh, the first player we can go ahead and start with is be the character down here, and they are the uh, player number one. If you look in here, it tells you what they're, they're trying to go for. So player number one wants the uh, pink girl and the green girl to succeed together. They want to get the hearts as high as possible. So they can go ahead and choose the hero or they can choose the uh, girl phase. We'll start with the hero phase and I'll show you why um, we'll talk about the hero phase first. And that's because there's a lot of rooms here and all these rooms have different abilities whether it be the uh, science room which is the right formula question mark. You gain a key and give the hero one random condition. Move the hero to the hallway and you may not take this action while the hero has an active condition. So you can see what conditions they could be. A plus one to love to all seduction cards, minus uh, the hero may only move one space during movement. Ooh, that's kind of dangerous. Because in the hallway here, the, it says ladies first. Girls don't count the hallway as a space, and then no loitering, which means the hero player, if he starts his, uh, it, it ends his turn here at the, the hallway, he's going to lose a key, which is basically the same as gaining one here, because they have to go here. And no messing around. Girls can't play cards while they're in the hallway. So that's, that's how this thing works. Basically, gives the hero a condition, and if he's lucky, he's able to move out of the room before the end of his phase, and he's going to be able to gain that key as a victory point. Um, it's my masterpiece. So some of these, like the art room, have a roll test, and it says one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six, and you roll it to see what happens. Four, oh, my boobs look so great, plus two love to one girl in the room. So that's pretty useful, right? But all of these do different things, so whether it be a swimming room or the two locker rooms, the gym, you can roll to see how well you do, whether you face plant or whether you uh, are super, super strong. Um, so let's go ahead and move. We'll start by moving, let's go ahead and move this character into here, in which case he's finished his movement. He's now able to do one of the actions, which is either to draw a girl card, or he can kick a girl out of the room. If there was a girl in here, he could kick her out. Or he can go ahead and try and test the room. So he'll go ahead and he can go ahead and roll this if he wants. But remember, there's no girls in the room. So taking the hero, uh, hero 
action first may be bad. Maybe you actually want to play a girl first because that way it's going to increase your odds, right? So we want pink to go ahead and be in there. So he would just, so we'll play, play the girl phase first, which in, in, the, in the girl phase, it tells you what happens to so draw a card from a girl. So we'll draw the pink girl. And then it says move girls or play cards. So we will go ahead and look at the two cards that we have for Katsumi. Uh, two love, then move the hero one space away. And this is just a two love. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the one that makes the hero go away because we don't want that to happen. So we'll discard this next to her deck. Move her uh, through the hallway for free into one of the doors here into the gym and then maybe we can make move another girl maybe you want to move uh, oh I don't know we can have her she can move in I suppose as well and uh, she is blue so we have to discard her card as well then that's be the end of the girl face for this player he could then move him in there and then he would be able to uh, basically try and do this room ability because that's going to change the love of the girl. So we'll go ahead and roll. A one, a face plant, minus one love to every girl in the room. So Blue's going to go down one love and so will Katsumi going down one love, which is not exactly what he wanted to happen. But if these were the two girls he liked, maybe he wanted to get a super strong plus one love to every girl in the room. That would have been very useful for him. After that, it'd be the next player's turn and the next player is then going to be able to move the hero around. Maybe he wants to go into, uh, I don't know, the history class, right? And it says draw one non-enhancement uh, enchantment card from the top of the girl's discard pile. So, uh, of any girl's discard pile. So maybe he likes this plus two love for a blue. He can put it in there. That's pretty useful. And then for the girl phase, maybe he wants to draw a green card and then he can go ahead and make the, uh, let's see who he wants to move in there. We'll have, oh, I don't know. We'll have this girl move in here. Move in there. And so, that's kind of the idea. Now, when you have a girl in a room with, with the, the hero, you can then play cards for that girl. So for instance, you pervert plus two love. It's a punishment card. Uh, primarily printed love value is plus, but if there are other girls in the room, it's actually minus. So in this case, because there's other girl interests in the room with him, uh, these cards are going to suffer penalty uh, for the girl that is played on, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what your love interest is and how you want to kind of canoodle your way in. Um, and then of course, you've got uh, this girl here, which is plus two love punishment as well. So she could actually lose as well. So if, she, if this character wasn't blue or green, that might be a good choice to play those two cards. Saving the rest. Remember, there's a limited amount of resources you have in the game, so you want to make sure you don't spend all your cards all at once. After each player has done that, basically, the first period will go to the second period, and uh, a meddling card is going to activate. Uh, this one says, I'll tell you why I'm so awesome. A famous alumni. Move the hero to and all girls to the gym. Wow. doodle 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 doo uh, No girl cards can be played in the gym this period. But, of course, he can go ahead and use this action here to try and make the girls fall in love or not fall in love. It's kind of how you want to utilize it. And it also lets you use all the different cards um, of the girls, just not in the specific room. Over here are plot points. And if you complete them, you're going to get these. And when you get these, uh, you can move your hero over here to this entry hall and cash them in to gain key, which are points, or victory points at the end of the game. Uh, have eight or more key tokens. That will score you three key. Uh, this one here says play one card or more from every girl in one turn five key that's really good uh one girl gains two love or more while at the pool so for instance if uh what if he was here and this girl gained uh two love during the pool then a player would take this card and put it in front of them in which case uh you also put uh, a new plot point and depending on the number of players is how many plot points are out so in a two-player game there's four in a three-player game there's five and i think you get the idea certain things will happen as far as conditions go that will have pluses and minuses to the hero for different reasons whether it has uh players must pay one key to claim a, a plot point card so this makes that a three worth a two and then plus one love to all enchantment cards etc etc just depends on type of conditions that can be activated on the hero there's a nurse's office that will get rid of conditions so on and so forth but the game is going to go throughout this it'll have a lunch period but that's basically the same as any other period for the other seven rounds and then finally the end of the game is where you add up all of your uh, all your key from what you've gained in the game and then if you uh if you had the love interest the highest value of hearts so if blue and pink were yours and you had the highest you're actually going to score bonus points but if you have maybe uh, the highest is red and then the next highest is oh i don't know let's go ahead and say green and green was the second player he'd score some points as well so there's different points that you're going to score based on how the love triangles kind of work based on this love tracker here but that's a basic idea of the game all the rooms there's tons of them that do different things and they all have different little quirks and whatnot but i think you get the idea of the game love battle high school all right let's come up and i'll give my review love battle high school 
Duel is a very simple game involving uh, a harem style anime fitting onto a board game and it does it very well. The artwork in the game is spectacular. This great box shows you exactly what the type of artwork you're going to have in the game and what it's going to look like. And then on the back it tells you exactly what's going to... This is my favorite type of box style, which it tells you everything that you're going to get and how it looks, as well as of course the great style artwork. If you're a fan of anime, especially harem anime, this is definitely one to check out because it does a great job of fitting the theme into a board game and it's a lot of fun. It's very competitive and it has a lot of those tropes. Each of the different characters, like let's go ahead and look at Akia here. Uh, she is actually, well, I think she's the one that goes to the the occult studies, so she believes in, in fate and destiny and she's also willing to do anything she can to uh, make sure the hero falls in love with her. Or then you've got uh, Yuki. I can't uh, stand to leave you alone for a second. She's like your best friend. She's always been there for you, but she's also developed this huge, intense crush on you and she gets really upset when everybody, anybody around you is trying to be lovey with you. You have, um, I don't care if anybody can see Katsumi. She's willing to just be show it off. Like, I don't care. We can make out in front of all these other girls. No big deal. Or maybe uh, Saki, uh, Sa uh, Sakiko, Sakiko, where she's more like, I don't even mind if she joins in. <laughs> <laughs> willing to get it at any it costs, whether it even be if she has to share. And then Rin, she's the punishment type. She's willing to beat you and make it fun. So all these girls have their own unique things, and they all actually have different abilities and whatnot that go along with their character types, as well as decks that kind of go along with it as well. For instance, the punishment girl, she says she decides if the primary love value in a punishment card will be plus or minus, regardless of how uh, it looks in the scene. Usually punishment can be a negative in some forms, and sometimes girls will have to get minus love when there's other girls in the room but when you have somebody who's more of a voyeur then she doesn't care and she also gives love to everybody else so it has some weird interesting twists to all the different girls and it fits with the theme fits with the story of a love battle high school harem style anime the conditions are great too like just added little things in here disembodied spirit uh, the awkward bone of the giant head lump the dumbfounded stare and of course the spontaneous nosebleed these things happen a lot in anime and I think it really does shed light on uh, the anime the theme and it's kind of a nice little added bonus to make the character feel a certain way depending on what situation you've put them in, him in. Uh, you've also got all of these different uh, plot points. And in anime, there are certain plot points that are more difficult to acquire than others based on the scenario. So being able to make all the girls come into a room and start screaming and blah, 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 that's going to give you a lot of points. So that shows that you've basically had a lot of stuff going on in one room with the girls. Or whether it be something more mundane, like uh, one girl gains two love or more while in the entry hall. So just the, guy, the girl comes up to him and she does something cute and bam, she scores uh, a little bit of a love interest with him and he, then you get a little bit of a victory point. It's all about making connections in this game, forming the different tropes and the different themes and whatnot and putting it together into this crazy little style board game, a little anime style board game. Uh, I, I love it. This game's super fun. When I first saw it, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it because there's, there is die rolling in the game and it felt like I thought you were just going to move to a place, roll a die and see what happens, move to a place, roll a die and see what happens. It's not really like that. There are spaces where you'll be rolling and you'll be like, oh, I hope I score a good a goal, a goal or something and I roll, I got a six. I did it. Success. Or I fall on my face. But that really makes sense. In an anime, you're never really sure what's going to happen in those, in those situations. Usually it's like, like, oh, he's definitely a nosedive, and then suddenly he actually scores it, and everybody's proud of him. Those like really rare instances in it. Uh, it's cool. I like that little addition. But for the most part, uh, most place, a lot of these spaces just do a specific type of thing, whether it be moving girls in certain locations, removing the conditions. Uh, you can be super, super risky by going to the janitor's closet, but you don't want to have more than one girl in there unless there's a specific type of situation. The principal's office, you can pretend to have one of the girls or the guy call in the girls as the principal to try and get them all together for some reason or another. It's great. I love it. It's so much fun. I love anime though and I love the themes. I love the tropes. All these are great. Uh, this is definitely one I would suggest taking a look at if you like anime style games. Japan anime games always has these little gems that I get to try out. I'm always super super surprised at the quality of the game, the style of the components, all the different little themes added to the game that I never thought would be. I, I, I just never suspected a game like this would even be able to be made. But then when I see it done, it's done right, it's done well. I'm very very happy to say that uh, this is a game I'll be keeping in my collection for quite some time. Oh, and real quick before we stop here, or I cut in somewhere in the middle of where I'm talking, the only one thing I had with this game was I always wanted to do more, and I think in a two-player game, 
I would just suggest drawing eight, uh, more cards of every character, just so that more and more stuff happens. It would just make it for a more high-scoring style game, but with three and four, it doesn't have that problem. It's just in a two-player game, you definitely want to be drawing some more cards so that more things happen and the character's able to move a little farther. But even still, it's a super small nitpick, but I wanted to throw that in there just to give some kind of a negative towards the game. I am a big fan of boy of anime, as you probably can see based on this review, so just, just let you know, it, it might be a little slower playing on a two-player game than a three and four-player game. It's definitely probably made for three and four players, but I, I like it either way. Anyway, back to the review. I even like these standees way better than I like miniatures. I would not have miniatures in this game because I want to see that artwork of the characters in the high school moving around. It feels a lot more realistic and all the characters remind me of a character I've seen in one or another anime of this type. Uh, so yeah, great. I love it. This is a game you should definitely check out if you like it. I strongly, strongly recommend Love Battle High School by Jap Anime Games. Two, three, four players. It doesn't matter. It's fun.